Hi pals, this is Blaine Hill with the Lake Murray from the Lake Murray Presbyterian Church and the Simply Stated Podcast, coming to you with part three of how to seek justice here on the uh, 22nd of uh, September. It is a beautiful day here in Chapin. Really, uh, I guess today is the second day of fall. It's lovely. And uh, we are continuing to look at Um, we are looking in, listening to the prophet Jeremiah once again. If you remove your abominations from my presence and do not waver, if you swear as the Lord lives in truth and justice, <coughs> excuse me, and in uprightness, the nation shall be blessed by him and by him they shall boast. So the Lord gives us three clear things to pursue, truth, justice, and uprightness. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the second one, justice, again today. What does the Lord mean by justice? Uh, and first of all, it means knowing right from wrong. It also means uh, the law of the Lord. Uh, murder is wrong. Stealing is wrong. False witness and lying are, are not right. Uh, simply the rules to live by. And I suppose this is where perhaps our common understanding of justice may lie, the idea that people who commit crimes need to be brought to justice and punished for their crimes. But there's a third way we should think about it, and this is probably the most important for us, particularly uh, as disciples of Jesus. And that's the care for our neighbor based on our neighbor's need. We should care for the people who are near us based on what they need, not on what they've earned. So to get the sense of care for neighbor, I'm going to flip back to the book of Leviticus. I know that Leviticus is a book that is uh, filled with laws, rules in the rule sense. Over and over in Leviticus, we read a bunch of rules, some of them quite strange to us. Let me read this one that won't be strange. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So God um, really ties, the Lord ties his identity to this principle of loving our neighbor as ourself. And that brings us to this, this third understanding of justice, to care for our neighbors based on need, to look at what people need, and to care for them based on that. Now, we can think of this in terms of eternal justice because this is how God treats us in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is God's disposition to you through His Son, Jesus. That God looks at the world in need for many reasons, uh, in need for forgiveness of sins, in need for salvation from suffering, a need for uh, companionship in our loneliness and grief, and God responds to that need in the person of his son, Jesus, gives us his son, Jesus. So first of all, we see God's justice displayed. God looks at us in our need and gives us his son. We don't deserve the son. In fact, we, we, there's a case to be made that we deserve God's condemnation, but that's not what God gives us. So we see an eternal justice where God gives us what we need in love and in kindness and compassion. God is kind and compassionate to you and loves you, and so gives you the Son. That's good news. Maybe all you need to hear today, but if, if that's not all we need to hear in totality, that's eternal justice. Then we maybe we think about justice as we live with our neighbors. Um, some of our neighbors don't have the same kind of opportunity as us, and, and we don't have the same as some neighbors, I suppose, too. We ought to look at our neighbors and consider together what they need. Are people hungry? Are they in need of medicine or care? Um, and instead of looking at what people should have by just by what they earn, what they deserve, we look at people and say, are they in need? Have they been given? Uh, uh, do they have what they need is what we really ask. There are two ways I, I think we can think about this in uh, American society. If you ever go to an ER, there's always in America a sign that says, uh, a woman who is expecting a baby or in labor uh, will receive treatment at this hospital or they'll be safely transported to a hospital where they can receive treatment. 
Uh, and that's part of our social understanding that if a woman is carrying a child and she comes and needs medical care and comes to a place that offers medical care, as a society, we, we have had the wisdom to decide that woman and that child will receive the medical care that they need, uh, particularly if she's going to deliver a baby. We're not going to let somebody, uh, a woman, uh, go through that and not get care in a hospital. Uh, she needs help and care in that situation. The trial needs help and care. And I don't think, I think we can easily agree we don't want to live in a society where a woman giving birth to a baby doesn't receive care in a medical facility. Uh, and so that's part of how we live towards our neighbors. Um, here's a second example from America. And this, is, uh, this ventures a little bit into opinion. My opinion is this. One of the great strengths, maybe the greatest strength of America is the freedom of opportunity we have. Um, but not of all, all of us have the same opportunities. And of course, that's always going to be the case. But we, see, we should seek as a, a society, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, to, awe, to make sure others have opportunity, the opportunity they need to live a, a life of dignity and a life where they can uh, respond to God's calling for their life. So... Um, that, that's a kind of a, a social or really even a political way to think about justice. Uh, have people been given the opportunity to a fair hearing, to a, an education, to um, just nutrition? Uh, we can think about uh, how our neighbors are treated as a society in terms of God's justice, giving to people according uh, to what they need, even their need so they can he hear God's calling. So here's a third one, personal. How do we seek personal justice? Well, this is one where we can put into practice most immediately and maybe ends with a little bit of a challenge to you to be on the lookout, to see where the people around you, the individuals you run into or talk with day by day, where are they in need? What do they need? Now, you may not be able to provide it, but you might. And to begin, if we begin by asking the question, what do our neighbors need uh, so that we can love them in the name of Jesus Christ, we might begin, able, begin personally to seek part of the justice that God calls us to, that we care for our neighbors, not simply based on right and wrong, that we do that, not only and certainly not just by rules or laws, though that's important, but to look at other people in need in their need and to see if it, we might be able to provide it. Because in doing so, we reflect the gospel of Jesus Christ. God looks at us in our need, not according to what we deserve, and God gives us his son, Jesus Christ. That's, that's the idea of biblical justice, at least as, I've been, as far as I've been able to explore it. Um, in closing of our devotional time, I, I want to read a famous verse from the prophet Micah that will encourage us towards justice. Micah asks, what does the Lord require of you? What does God expect of us? Actually, God says this, my Jose, Joel, Amos, Micah, Nahum. There we are. Sorry about the delay. He has told you, O mortal, what is good. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? So each of us is called together, called to seek justice, and we're called as a, as a society to do that as a reflection of God's love in His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's what the Spirit empowers us to do. Well, next time I plan on looking at the third word Jeremiah holds out, uprightness. Uh, and I think I have an interesting little illustration I hope you'll tune in for. A um, few details in the life of Lake Murray Presbyterian Church, just a little news. We will continue to have worship on the lake at 8.30 through the month of October. That's our plan. And worship at 10.30 in the sanctuary. Both of those services are available online. Our plan for November 1st is to have both services inside, uh, observing appropriate social distance still. Um, uh, to, to keep people healthy. Sunday school is back in full swing. We have uh, some in-person options 
and hybrid and online. Hybrid means we, we have some classes where if you are ready to be in the classroom, you can participate that way. And if uh, you want to participate electronically, uh, you certainly can still do that. By the way, I encourage those of you who are uh, out of town on a Sunday uh, per, to consider uh, particularly participating in worship online, even if you're out of town, um, uh, or a Sunday, a Sunday school class as well. Uh, that may be one of the unsought blessings of all of these last six months as we expand our way of being a community together. Uh, uh, last little announcement, youth. The youth program is also back in effect, so if you have a young person, uh, be sure to check out the church electronic or in-print newsletter that will give you the details, details for that. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, it is good uh, to be able to uh, be in touch, and I hope to see you one way or another very soon. God bless.